Hello, my friends. Here I am with my great friend, Steve Kaufman, great polyglot, and he is here uh, for the 20th time. I don't know. So today we're going to talk about some really, really cool topics uh, in regards to language learning. So if anyone's even remotely interested in learning a language or if you're already learning a language, you're going to get uh, a lot out of this video. The importance of compelling input and the idea of comprehensible input. And ideally, we're going to have both of them at the same time. So we're going to be consuming content that we love, that is very compelling, that we're really interested in. But it needs to be comprehensible enough that we don't get completely lost, right? Because I remember that you, Steve, you mentioned that like when you started to, to learn Russian and it was very much the same way, you were starting thinking like, well, when can I read Tolstoy? When can I read Dostoevsky in Russian? It's easy to find content that is compelling, but not comprehensible, especially the start. Comprehensible, but not that compelling because it's a bit boring boring and so on. If we want to get exposure to super compelling content that's not comprehensible, what should we do? Okay, so here's an area where I don't entirely agree with Stephen Crash. Uh, there's two, two sort of concepts that I don't necessarily agree with. One is the idea that it always has to be compelling and comprehensible. It's simply not possible. When you start out in a, in a language, you're starting a new language, nothing is comprehensible. Mm -hmm. So you have to get mm -hmm. from like zero comprehensible to some level of comprehension. So the strategy in the first, say, three months, six months is going to be a little different. And so when you start at zero comprehension, you have to have a lot of repetition. And that's one of my criticisms of the typical starter books that they go, you know, you, chapter one, you're at the customs, chapter two, you're in a restaurant, <laughs> chapter three, you're in the doctor's office, and that the, the vocabulary doesn't repeat. So that's why in our mini stories at Link, we make sure we build in lots of repetition, of, particularly of high frequency verbs in each individual story. So mm -hmm. there is that first period that's a steep climb where you start, you know, take something that is total noise, incomprehensible noise. And after three or six months, you understand something and you can say something. So that's phase one. And there it's not very compelling. And, but you make it comprehensible if you listen often enough if you have access to transcripts, if you're able to look up words easily with an online dictionary or a link, whatever you're using. So that's phase one. Now, then there's this progression to the genuinely authentic material aimed at the native speaker, which even after three or six months on the repetitive simple stuff is still just out of reach. Mm -hmm. And that's why the big dilemma, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on this, in language learning is the lack of interesting material at the intermediate level to sort of bridge that gap from the, the high repetition, high frequency ver words, get started in the language to where you can actually access interesting material. No, I think that it is a fascinating dilemma. And what I would normally do is that I would um, already try to get as much, you know, enjoyment out of the really compelling stuff, even though it was still out of reach. I also have like bilingual books. So for instance, I'll, I'll use Russian as an example. So I had some books that are, uh, um, in German and Russian, and my German is a lot better, uh, as well as French and Russian. And my French is also a lot better than my, um, than my Russian. So then I would just like try to read as much as I could in Russian and often sometimes in a, in a full sentence I would understand very little or sometimes would get a couple words then I would go and compare a bit to the French and then I'd be you know studying French at the same time which is nice too because then I would just be developing my French so I would just like try to to go through that and sometimes yeah it was it was difficult right because it's just kind of like well there's a lot that I don't understand but sometimes it was very interesting because after a couple of hours of struggling a little bit more then it could actually start reading a little bit. It would flow a little bit better. And after a couple of days, it would flow even, even faster. But then it would also not, you know, go back to the basic stuff too. I would always like have some, you know, exposure to basic stuff, repetition to just like really, to really be able to really master basic and more intermediate vocab because that takes a while too. I agree with you there. The need to go back to the simpler stuff where you get more confidence, more sort of, fluency in your reading and in your listening and then you go and attack that difficult stuff again but I also wanted to pick on something I mentioned earlier and that is this uh, one of the things that you hear from many language you know theor theorists of language acquisition 
is that you always have, we should be dealing with sort of N plus one difficulty mm -hmm. or that you want, um, you know, you want to have 95% known words in any, anything that you read. I mean, at that rate, it would take you forever to learn a language. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what you have to do is what you suggested there is you have to have a strategy that enables you to tackle 20% unknown words, 15% unknown words. If it's 50%, it's too much to me. I, I, I mean, some people may be, and, and I did initially in Russian, but it's a lot of hard work. But if you're dealing with 3% unknown words, yes, you can pick up a book. And you can ignore the three percent unknown words. It doesn't matter. That's fine. You understand That's by a strategy. Context. Yeah, that's true. you understand by context. But you, it's going to take forever to acquire those missing words if you're only allowing yourself three percent unknown words. Uh, I find that if you have a workaround, for example, in your case, a bilingual book. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, you can get books where the translation into whatever language you're using. It could be your own. It could be a language that you speak well. For your, uh, for you, as French or German where they have them interspersed. That's another way of doing it. They have books with vocabulary lists or with online dictionaries now with link, you can actually look words up as you go. Mm. But I find you now have the means of moving forward because you have to acquire words mm -hmm. and the, the word frequency design, declines very, very quickly. So you have to consume a lot of material with actually quite a lot of unknown words, learn them, forget them, learn them, forget them. So. The idea that you can learn a language by simply reading material that has 97% known words in it, I don't believe that. It takes a long time before you get to where you can read Dostoevsky or, yeah. or Tolstoy <laughs> oh God, yeah. with only 3% only unknown words. So yeah. you need a strategy. You need a strategy uh, to get to the uh, authentic material. I mean, the goal is to just pick up a book and read it. Okay, mm. with with the goal is three percent unknown words. But while you're learning, it's not three percent; it's ten or fifteen percent unknown words. Uh, but that's where I wish there were more intermediate content. And so there are people like uh, Français Authentique. Uh, I'm just trying to think of. There's a number of them where they are Leo from Portugal, uh, where they are creating interesting stuff, interviews, and typically discussions are going to be less. You know, the, 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 they're going to use more high frequency words in a casual discussion, even such as we're having right now. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you read Tolstoy, you're going to have a lot more low frequency words. So I think we can help learners along by by churning out more interesting, compelling content at a lower degree of difficulty. Yeah, no, th I think that that's that is fascinating. There's also this Russian uh, channel that's doing the same thing. I forgot the, the, the gentleman's name, but he's so cool. And he's actually on link. Um, love his work, but uh, I'll, I'll try. Is it Russian with Max? With, with Max? Max? No. Okay. Yeah. Ma so I thought, uh, anyway, maybe. I think uh, I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll put it down later. I'll put it down later on the, on the, <laughs> on the description. But uh, no, I fully agree. And the funny thing is that like uh, in the in the little video that you had with um, Stephen Crash and basically he brought up the point that like oh yeah you know like that uh teachers can do that they can create content that will be super compelling and comprehensible as well so that's the the teacher's job like so a great teacher will create that sort of a uh, content especially for the intermediate plateau we agree on many things that's another thing that we agree on because right uh, especially the it is it would be and i would find it a, even extremely boring to just like you know at such a slow pace just like oh no i need to find content now I understand 97% of it, uh, but there's this other content that's like that I really like, but it's only I, un I only understand 90%, so I can't touch that yet. So if I, that would drive me crazy. That right. would drive me absolutely crazy. So like I think that also we need to have some tolerance to noise, really. You know, and I, I think that my, my tolerance level it, it's very high because I just really want to consume really compelling input so things that really excite me like i don't mind if i don't understand zilch and like and i start building from from that right so like for instance when i uh with the um, pushkin i started get, getting like really into everything about pushkin just like the sound of the of his poetry the the musicality of it the and then when i started to understand it better it was just like wow i really i really love this stuff and initially i would just understand so little but it was just like fun to like bounce back and forth with the material and just like, you know, be looking at basic content, reviewing intermediate content, and then going to Pushkin and then Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and like not understanding Tolstoy that well. But it didn't matter because it was really like pushing myself and, and having a good time, like loving the Russian language.
Right. And I think that which that is really, the key. Which is the key, exactly. Like if you're, if you're loving the process. You love the, the language itself. You love the material that you're using. Because the biggest problem is that if you're just overwhelmed and you're like using some stuff and you're just like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. I, uh, and then you're questioning your own progress, your, your own perception. It's just like, oh, am I having any progress? Am I doing it the right way? Or Because the, the big question is then, okay, so let's say that you're, you're using compelling input that you love, but you're just at 60 or 55%. What do you do? I have to admit that now I used to, I think I, when I went at Russian, uh, I did use content which had say 40% unknown words. I try to avoid that now. Uh, most of my Arabic and Farsi is in that 15%. So I just struggle, I guess I struggle uh, and hope to get to that 15. I think I consider 15% to be my sweet spot where I'm learning enough new words and yet, uh, you know, I, cause I don't want it too easy, but I don't want it too difficult. Mm -hmm. So I try to avoid, to be honest, I try to yeah. avoid 30, 40% unknown words. And, um, you know, the, the, the reality is that word frequency declines so quickly that, uh, I don't know if you can consume enough, that's again, gets back to this intermediate content. So in part in, in Persian, I had a woman, in the Iran, create a whole bunch of intermediate level content on Iranian history, Iranian food, Iranian carpets, blah, blah, blah. And I think that brought up my vocabulary level to a point where I can access podcasts and now they're only 15% unknown words. Nice. I think the secret is to try to find more intermediate content. That's why I keep on coming back to this, uh, you know, content creators in whatever language, teachers, they should be creating you know, conversations with people, monologues, talk about themselves, their lives, the history, their country, whatever, at an intermediate level, so that people don't have to fight with 40% unknown words. Yeah. Not everyone is as uh, much of a bear for punishment as Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just like, it is frustrating, right? Sometimes like when you really, yeah. when you really want to understand this stuff you you love it but it, you just you know that you're still far away yeah but that's an excellent strategy obviously just uh seek out that intermediate content that is right not only solidifying the the more uh the higher frequency vocab and like the basic stuff that you're just then really mastering but then right. you're just starting to reach out with you know like and starting to learn more um advanced exactly. content which is really cool so yep. thank you so much steve okay. your words are uh Gabriel, yeah, like a lot of people will learn a we lot. We always agree. We always agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank Have you very much. Good one. Thank you. Okay.